Welcome to the ninth Sunday before Easter, which is, we usually call it a Septuagesima, that is 70th, 70 days before Easter. And uh, we go for the next Sunday, which we call Sexagesima, and then the third one, that is the 60th, and then the Quinquagesima, which is called the, you know, 50th. And when the Ash Wednesday we start, we call it Quadra Gesima, which is not here, but Ash Wednesday means the Quadra Gesima. These are some Latin words which came into being into the church. And uh, from today, it is called 70th day, is before Easter. Uh, the word 70th is very important because Israel went for 70 years into the Babylon, and uh, that's why that has been taken over here by the church, so that we remember the suffering that Israel went through for 70 years in Babylon and then they were restored back to Jerusalem. And, uh, and we remember and repent for our sins. This time we prepare for repentance. We prepare for Lent. These are the preparation for Lent. Very, very important three Sundays. And in these three Sundays, we, we take the themes where we remember that God, how he preparing ourselves to repent that God, what he has provided us, we may be carefully using those gifts. Today the theme is, God created us as a joint heirs to his kingdom. And the coming Sunday will be, God, uh, uh, by his grace, uh, our hearts can be made pure. And the third, that is on the uh, 50th Sunday before Easter, that is Quenca Gesima, which is called God promise to forgive those who repent, those who, those who humble before the Lord. And of course, we come to Quadra Gesima, which is the Ash Wednesday. We, the theme goes over there. That's the beginning of the Lent season. And uh, Ash Wednesday, we start with Christian discipline, the spirit of this uh, discipline, that how God disciplines us with the spirit and what he demands from us. Today's stream demands that we are the joint heirs of the kingdom of God. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, God created man in his own image. Male and female, he created them. Come, let us kneel, the Lord our maker. And that's, that's it, reminds us. And in Jesus Christ, when we are joint heirs, he says we are neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. We are all are one in Christ Jesus. With this theme, let us adore and praise us as we sing and praise our Lord.
Let us say the prayer together. If you remember, do say it along. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, in your loving wisdom you have enriched the human race with many and various gifts. Grant that men and women using all the talents entrusted to them may work together to fulfill your purpose and reveal your glory in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. The responsive reading this morning is taken from Psalm 148, 7 to 14. Please respond by saying, let them praise his name in the dance. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures, and all the deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth, and all peoples, princes, and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for His name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for His people. Praise for all His saints, for the people of Israel, who are near to Him, Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and Testament reading is from the book of Genesis chapter 2 verses 4 to 8 and 18 to 25. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he could call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air 
and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the first letters of St. Paul to Peter, chapter 3, verses beginning at 1 and ending at 7. And in this we read about, Peter teaches about marriage, in which husband and wife should honor each other as joint heirs of the grace of God. Likewise, you wives, be submissive to your husbands, so that some, though they do not obey the word, may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives, when they see your reverent and chaste behavior. Let not yours be the outward adorning with braiding of hair, decoration of gold, and wearing of fine clothing, but let it be hidden, person of the heart, with the imperishable jewel of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. So once the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves and were submissive to their husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you are now her children, if you do right and let nothing terrify you. Likewise, you husbands, live considerately with your wives, bestowing honor on the woman as the weaker sex, since you are joint heirs of the grace of life, in order that your praise may not be hindered. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God.
The gospel reading has been taken from the gospel according to Mark chapter 10 verses 2 to 9. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? He replied, They said, Moses permitted a man to write the certificate of, of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law. Jesus replied, But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his word. In our intercession, let us join our prayer for the whole human family with the unceasing prayer of Christ the Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for justice and peace in the whole world and for fullness of life for everyone. Lord, in your mercy, please say, hear our prayer. For all who live in this city, for the removal of all that divides us from each other and for true harmony in our country. Lord, in your mercy, please say, hear our prayer. For all engaged in agriculture, industry and commerce, for all workers skilled and unskilled, and for all those who defend our country. Lord, in your mercy, please say, hear our prayer. For teachers, students, scientists, and artists, and writers, and for all who influence the minds and hearts of others. Lord, in your mercy, please say, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering, the poor and the hungry, the destitute and oppressed, the unemployed, the sick and the dying, and for all who help them. Lord, in your mercy, please say, hear our prayer. For all to whom authority is entrusted in this and other countries, and especially for our President, the Prime Minister, the Lieutenant Governor and Chief Minister of this state, and for all who have power over other people. Lord, in your mercy, please say, hear our prayer. For the unity of all Christian people and for the witness and service in the world. Lord, in your mercy, please say, hear our prayer. For your whole church in this country, for its councils and leaders, especially P.C. Singh, our moderator and Bishop of Delhi, A. Dharamaraj Rasalam, moderator of the Church of South India, and G. Vargis Marthodias, Metropolitan of the Marthoma Church, for Timothy, Shailesh, Dennis Lal, Jai Kumar, our presbyters, and our lay leaders, Ashish, Anurag, and all other ministers of your church, that they may be faithful in your ministry. Lord, in your mercy, please say, hear our prayer, that with all your people who have faithfully served you in this life, we also may share in the eternal joy of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, please say, hear our prayer. Let us say the prayer together. Hasten, Heavenly Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant these petitions which you offer in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ said, The Lord our God is the only Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved by God's grace to keep his commandments, and to live in love and peace with all people. Let us say this prayer together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against one another in thought and word and deed in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done through ignorance through weakness through our own deliberate fault we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son jesus christ who died for us forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal to Jesus Christ our Lord. Say together, Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us share the peace with each other. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we all baptize into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please say to each other and also with you.
Let's pray. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, as we look upon to the word that we look to ourselves, not our will, let your will take place as we begin to prepare to enter into Lent season. And these worships which are there are, help us that we may be able to humble before you and know things that pleases you and we may repent and revive and renew ourselves. Sanctify us, Lord, with your word that we are able to see you and live for you and for your glory to Jesus Christ Lord we pray amen the first team today as we before we enter into Lent season is God creates men and women to be joint heirs of his kingdom as I said earlier in the beginning of the worship that this Sunday is usually it's called Septuagesima now this is a Latin word, it means the 70th day before Easter. And then the following is the 60th day before Easter, that is sec sexagesima. And then we have the 60th and then we have the 50th day, which is called quenca gesima. Gesima, that is on 27th of February, it's a Latin word. It's the 50th. Uh, days before the Lent. And then we come to the Ash when is a, is a quadragesima. That's where it begins, you know, the Lent season. Now, the 40 days. The whole idea of 40 and 70, the church took into consideration. And uh, it's, a, it's a usually uh, thought on the Catholic Church circle, very important at the 70th day beginning, remembering the sins that we have committed against the Lord and to which God created us a a place for us that we had Israel had the promised land and they and they sinned in that land. the Lord took away that land and they were punished in Babylon for 70 years and the Greek Orthodox Church this is called a prodigal Sunday it's reminding you of the one who went away Luke chapter 15 it talks about the waiting of the son and he took his position from the home the sin that we committed uh, and 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 then in the parable of prodigals so today, the scripture has preparing us today, us today, very important, as we, before we enter to learn to repent as Jesus was tempted and he never yielded to the temptation and he overcame it. Today, God reminds us that we are created in the image of God. And when we are created in the image of God, Genesis chapter 2 that we read, the second account of creation, is given once again that's in the twice it is narrated the creation account and the second account of creation where you reveal how the Adam and Eve were created and how God made Adam and all the creation was created and then he made them jointly together you know both will cling shall be one flesh it's been repeated again by Jesus in Mark chapter 10 that we just read to us verse 2 to 9 what God has joined together for they shall be one and uh, no one can separate them and then Peter's, in the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, being read today, is also referring to the same thing. It talks about bringing together husband and wife, what is the value of a wife with the husband and a husband's wife's value, where they are together and uh, they are one in the body of Christ. Again, revealing the same verses that were said in Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, that they shall be one together out of man a woman was created by there together as one being created in image it is the word that is used in the scripture today is called joint heirs of his of his creation Adam and Eve and in Jesus joint heirs into his kingdom and what Peter is saying joint heirs in his kingdom now the whole idea of joint heirs is something which means a one who is a successor, beneficiary, or inheritor or recipient of what has been given to him. But we will go and to understand this, how can you and I can be a joint heirs in, with him? It's not in the Bible written and kept over there, it's there for us. How can you be, you and I can be a part of the joint heirs like Adam and Eve and husband and wife. What uh, has been said by Peter and by Jesus, that no one shall divide them, they will be joined together. But how can we understand today that we, it's from the scripture, that we are the joint heirs? 
we look to Romans chapter 8 and verse 17 that makes us much more clearer picture is not confined only to husband right which is the part and basis of it the men and women it says Romans chapter 8 verse 17 says that now if we are children then we are heirs heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his suffering so that we may also share in his glory very powerful words we should not take these words very lightly and uh, they sort of talks about our inheritance let me read it again it says now if we are children then we are heirs heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his suffering we may also share in his glory now in order to understand this amazing fact that that we people of God who believe in Jesus become a joint heirs with Christ what exactly does that mean? What does it mean to be joint heirs in Christ? Well, that's what we're going to do and think about. Now, if we are the children, then we are uh, the heirs and heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Indeed, we share in his suffering. So also we share in his glory. Let's take bit by bit. Let's divide into this verse into two sections in order to understand how can we be heirs into the kingdom of God. Well, the first part is if we are God's children, then we are also God's heirs. Let's take that first part. So, and, 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 then, uh, uh, and then we can understand the second, if we are God's heir, then we are joint heirs with Christ. If we are God's children, that's first, then we are also God's heir. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, we have been called the children of God. The faith that we have in Jesus. We trust in him. We hope in him. We have that faith. We believe in that. And since we become children of God. Now we also will become the heirs. Now. How does this mean to become an heir to the throne of God? How are you going to become with him? God's heir. Well. It means that a person. Heirs means a person who will inherit there will be a right when you believe in Jesus Christ, the rights are inherited. Like a person dies, the property is inherited with a person, a person inherits that. You know, that's where typically always happen uh, with the parents, you know. As our parents and our children, they are entrusted with the ownership of what belongs to our parents. And then while they are still alive, and then afterward, we give our rights of a home, of what we eat and what we have, all the material things, the car, the house, and even we give our children all the money to spend. This is the right of our children that is there. But eventually, when parents pass this on, you know, this right to their children, they become heir, they've got right to inherit whatever belongs to them, to their children. And what can be there that parents you know they don't owe anything that's nothing that belongs to them one of the rights given by God as an heirs is to God's throne is an inheritance beneficiaries over everything that belongs to God I say it again everything that belongs to God what belongs to God everything this whole universe this whole cosmos belong to God why stop here the, everything that's seen in the world belongs to God and whatever belong in the kingdom is all belong to God that's all God's property it all ownership is in the hand of God we inherit that that's what the Paul is trying to make us understand let's think we have houses, we have cars, we have money we have name, we have fame, we have status we have positions, everything we are basically handling this as a mere stewards. That is only an agent to be caretaker of these possessions that we have. Well, when we die, we can't keep it to ourselves because that's the end of the day. We can't carry it on even. It, it never becomes really our ours. It belongs to God. It is not us. When you go away, it, gone, it just belonged to God. So God then created a successor. We become joint heirs with Christ. We become joint successor, joint beneficiaries, joint inheritors. And that's why it goes to the children. It doesn't belong to us. 
in order to understand this further that we are also joint heirs with Christ we are God's heir then we are also joint heir with Christ it's very it's very strange to think that become inherit of God's throne <laughs> well that's what it is part over the scripture Paul is trying to make us understand that we are joint heirs with Christ with Jesus Christ the only begotten son now what is this begotten is all about in John 3 16 his only begotten son what is it all about? let's quickly look to that begotten is basically referred to a child who is the only offspring that is mean he is only the descendant of his or her father Jesus is the only that's the only means that Jesus is the only offspring to God the Father that means Jesus is the only natural heirs to the God's throne he is the only one who naturally become the heirs to God so we originally are God's children and not originally heirs to God's throne originally we are not it is Jesus Christ only we become, when we become firstborn son, the children, the true heirs to God's throne, which is Jesus. So Jesus is the only son, becomes the joint heirs to the God's kingdom and to God's throne. He is the only one. So God's begotten son, Jesus, is the only heirs, and Jesus inherits everything that is God's. You know, that's very important. And everything that exists. So, Paul is trying to get us understand in Romans 8, 17 that Jesus is the heir of God's throne. We are also heirs to the God's throne. Just as Jesus inherits everything that belongs to God, our inheritance is also everything that is God's. We become partaker of that inheritance. And how that happened? That happened when we are adopted as the children of God. God has adopted us into his own family. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 and 5 says, But when we said time has fully come, God sent his son, born of woman, born under the law. He redeemed those under the law that he might receive adoption to sonship. Isn't it? What is this? That we being a joint heir with Christ through adoption, you know, have been in to the throne of, have been incorporated into the throne of God. Can you think? You cannot think you can be. But that's what the scriptures say. That is what it is. Even though we have been adopted in God's family, our status is joint heir with Christ, we still share in the throne of God and in inheritance of God. We share it. That's very important. You can't write it. In Jewish family, what happened in culture, the right of adopted child is considered by law the same as the right of the biological child. It is exactly the same according to the Jewish tradition and culture. This means if a Jewish family, according to Jewish culture, adopt a child, you know, as much as a right equally has with the parents who have the natural born children. Isn't it profound? That's so great in the Jewish law. That's there. So inheritance as a children of God belongs to Jesus means because we are joint heirs with God, with Jesus Christ. Now what is the heirs to the throne over here means? We become heirs also. Men and women jointed together, inherit to the kingdom, to the throne, with Christ, we become joint heirs. The third part, understanding of the throne, probably many people usually ask, that what our inheritance will look like the truth is so we all also look like but some of the scriptural verses uh, refers to that it refers in him we have obtained an inheritance in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 says having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works for all things according to the counsel of his will also when we look to Hebrew chapter 9 verse 15 therefore he is the mediator of the new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance you know and first peter chapter 1 and uh, verse 3 says you know uh, through the resurrection of Je we are born again living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled unfading kept in heaven for us now all these verses what it tells us 
it tells us, you know, that our inherit is not something that is kept in the heaven, but we are the inheritor to the entire kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 34, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth, you know. It's there, come and be blessed, Jesus said. That makes sense. The entire kingdom is God's property. And God's children, therefore, are the heirs. It would make sense if you also heir, become the heirs to the throne of God and so inherit the kingdom of God. But it's hard to imagine today. We can't think of that. But that's the scripture telling us to think. Because you have been spiritually reborn into the kingdom of God, you are now God's children, heir, and the joint heirs with Christ. That's very clear from the scripture. And Romans 8, chapter 7, chapter 8, verse 17. But let's conclude and recap it, what it's all been said just now. That you and I become co-heir. The men and women become co-heir in Christ Jesus, in Christ's kingdom, to the throne of God. It says, because being as a children of God, we are also God's heir. Thus, also, with the result of that, we become joint heirs with Christ. That's one thing. The second thing that happens to us is one of the rights which are given as heirs to the God's throne is that we are inheritors. We inherit everything that belongs to God. We inherit everything that belongs to God as a children of God, as a believer of God. Our inheritance is not earthly. That's what we've been given to. It's eternal. It's heavenly one. And it cannot be destroyed. It cannot be doomed. That's the eternal inheritance that we will acquire if we are joint heirs with Christ. The third thing, very important, that here is a throne of inheritance of the kingdom of God. You know, that's very important. But it also says, it also, it, it also reminds us that, you know, as a joint heirs of the kingdom of God, we are reminded that we cannot be destroyed. These throne inheritance belongs and is of the kingdom of God. That means being a joint heir with Christ is a reward to us. He has rewarded us. He has made us as we believe in Jesus Christ. And also, as we believe, we are willing to suffer with Christ. It's very important. By suffering, you become joint inheritor. Everlasting life is a free gift of God to us. The eternal reward is not kept, but it is earned by every believer willing to suffer for Lord Jesus Christ. That's where the Spirit of God works in our life. That's where God has destined and made marriage, made wife and husband, man and woman to become the joint here. That's why what we acquire pass on and we do not become owner. We be, do not become inheritor. But inheritance go ahead further. We go away to the eternal inheritance, the kingdom of God. Okay? And that's where we are in that throne of God, that inheritors, that we go and be with them. Be part of it forever and forever. Which cannot be destroyed, which cannot be doomed. So when we enter in, before we enter into Lent, we have been inherited. The heavenly glory, the heavenly kingdom, the heavenly throne. And that's the promise that the scripture tells us. If we have this, then where things are going wrong? That's we're going to see in the coming Sunday. Let the grace of God, our hearts be made pure. Can you see this true? Or can we see this true in our life coming? I believe pain and suffering has no place over here. But yet, before we enter Lent, Lord preparing our heart. And you want us to see to prepare us how as an inheritor to the God's throne, to the kingdom of God in Christ Jesus, with the power of spirit that has been revealed and been manifested into our life, how are we going to live true? No matter what state of life the world may live in. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this moment. Thank you for making us co here, Lord. Thank you making us co here of everything, of every property that belongs to you. And this whole cosmos in the heaven, Lord, the throne, it's all yours. And you are the only begotten successor of everything, of the Father, Jesus Christ. And you have inherited it. And those who believe in you, you have made them joint heirs to your very property, to your very kingdom, to your very throne of the Father. Thank you for this great provision. 
Thank you that you have made mankind in the image of yours, in your image, in your nature, and we dwell in that, Lord. And that's where we are, Lord, before your throne of grace. So help us, Lord, to see through and live through as a joint inheritor co-heirs to your kingdom of God in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us all affirm our faith and say together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died and was buried. On the third day He rose again in fulfillment of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism of the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings go. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May the light of Christ the Lord shine in your hearts and minds that you may see his glory and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us forever and ever amen go in peace to love and serve the Lord please say in the name of Christ amen, amen.